the time of trouble, such as never was, came upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. Watching the replay of Earth's final scene in the courtroom is emotional for us on many different levels. The redeemed jurors at last get to see the ripening and end result of the principles of Satan's rebellion which began in heaven. The deception had been so deeply laid, the plot so perfectly calculated that it exposed with clarity all who had not truly submitted themselves to the will and truth of God. The witnesses who now take the stand are those who lived through it or had faithfully given their lives. During this final conflict, the final events of Earth's history began to unfold simultaneously with the going forth of the fully restored, unadulterated gospel. The churches that had ultimately rejected the preaching of this message became designated as Babylon, Revelation 14.8, and as the beast that had horns like a lamb but spoke like a dragon. Revelation 13 verse 11. These symbols pointed to those who professed to follow the Lamb, but in actuality espoused the lawlessness of the dragon. Satan had crafted a slow and deliberate process of leading the churches of earth to focus more and more on an earthly nationalism and less and less of the heavenly kingdom. The churches in the most powerful nation on earth began to desire, forcing Christianity on society in the name of Jesus. Of course, they thought they were doing God's service, but because they did not know Jesus, they did not understand that love and righteousness cannot be forced. The ones who had been bent on this idea of earthly dominionism revealed the same heart Lucifer had in heaven, the desire to rule by force in the name and under the guise of holiness. Yet thousands of unbelievers revolted against any such idea of making the world a Christian theocracy. Skeptics, atheists, and people from other religions united in opposing this false movement within Christianity to convert the world through legislation. They saw this as a mere repeat and image to the Church of the Dark Ages, which had done that exact thing, using political power to persuade the masses to serve God. Many of God's people, students of prophecy throughout the ages, had known that the Bible prophesied that the entire world would unite against the people of God. We knew this was called the time of trouble. Daniel 12, 1, 2. What many of us could not understand was how a world so divided in beliefs would ultimately unite to fight against those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Revelation 12, 17. Those of us not living in these final days find out here in the court exactly what or rather exactly who was able to unite, skeptics, religionists of all kinds, with Babylon, the system of fallen churches across the globe. It was, in fact, Satan counterfeiting the appearing of Christ. The day it happened took the world by surprise. The fallen Christian churches who had embraced false teachings were not aware that when Christ returned the second time, it would neither be secret nor invisible. Matthew 24, verse 27. They did not know that when Jesus came again, his feet would not touch the ground. But instead, he would stop in the air and call the saints up to meet him in the sky, taking them with him to heaven for a thousand years. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-17, Revelation 20, verse 4 and 5, John 14, 1-3. Thus, when Satan appeared as a being of light, pretending to be Christ at his second coming. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, while his feet touched the earth, claiming to set up the millennial kingdom on earth, the unstudied Christian church received him as Jesus. He had now accomplished on earth what he attempted in heaven, to be worshipped as the Most High. Isaiah 14 verse 12 But he did not come alone. When Jesus returns, the dead are raised to life. So to complete this masterpiece of deception, Satan's fallen angels impersonate the dead. Revelation 16 verse 13 this overwhelming miracle convinces even the skeptic, the atheist, the stubborn unbeliever who swore they would never believe unless they saw. Now seeing is believing, and the entire world, Muslims, atheists, fallen Christianity, Jews, Buddhists, agnostics, and everyone in between bow at the foot of this counterfeit Messiah. Because the Christian churches were led to believe that the 1,000-year rule would take place on this earth. They were ripe for the ultimate deception of Satan pretending to be Christ and ushering in this period. This imposter tells them that the sign of allegiance to his millennial kingdom on earth is the Sabbath, and that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh is to come before him to worship. Isaiah 66 verse 12 and 13. By this, however, he means the first day of the week instead of the seventh day. This is his attempt to lead the whole world to worship him as the creator through observing a false Sabbath in dedication to himself. 
Those who refuse him, who see through this charade, are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. They know this is a counterfeit, and in saying this, they incur the wrath and vitriol of his deceived believers, as if they are blaspheming Christ himself. This false Jesus then tells the masses that those who refuse to obey him are blasphemous and are worthy of death, and should not be privileged to buy or sell. Revelation 13, 15-17 he tells them that these are the wicked ones whom are to be judged during the 1,000 years on earth, and peace comes only as these rebellious ones are eliminated. How powerful a deception he leads the wicked to think they were the righteous ones who would judge on earth. And just as the decree to kill those who refuse to worship the beast and his image, or receive the mark of this Antichrist, it was then that I, who had been dead for over 200 years, heard the words, Awake! 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 